have this one just gone. <coughs> had this song on my mind and after what John said it's the <coughs> there's so many of them in the gas but you could be it's just good. it's difficult to pick one but <coughs> at number four keep silence all created things <coughs> And wait thy maker's known. My soul stands trembling while she sings the honors of her God. Life, death, and hell, and worlds unknown hang on his firm decree. He sits on no precarious throne, nor borrows we to be. Chained to his throne, a volume lies with all the fates of men. With every angel's form and size, drawn by the eternal pen, his providence unfolds the book and makes his counsel shine. Each opening leaf and every stroke fulfills some deep design. Here he exalts neglected worms to scepters and a crown, and there the following page he turns and treads the monarchs down. Not Gabriel asks the reason why, nor God the reason gives, nor dares the favorite angel pry between the folded leaves. My God, I would not long to see my fate with curious eyes. What gloomy lines are writ for me, or what bright scenes may rise. In thy fair book of life and grace, Oh, may I find my name recorded in some humble place beneath my Lord the Lamb. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's just such a good song. <clears throat> and John, I've had it on that one and then the one we always sing. Num number six has just been rolling. And <clears throat> that, you know, it's amazing. been singing that number six for I don't know how many years now. And there's still lines I, I have to, I, I can't recall, but I'll get stuck on one. And, um, those songs, that's Watts, and that, that man, uh, he'd had some experiences and he was shown a lot. Because mm -hmm. you can't write that without that. Um, <clears throat> That theory, that. Yeah. I wanna, I'm gonna look at the Beatitudes, but I wanna start in Matthew chapter 19. There was an event took place. Like I said, I wanna get over to the Beatitudes, but you know, thinking of that. Romans 8.28 on the things for all things work together for good to them that love the Lord God according to His purpose and that was that song that I just read through <clears throat> but there was an event took place here and I'm just going to read through it and really kind of fast and behold uh, 19 and verse 16 and behold one came and said unto him good master and the key word in there is what good thing shall I do <coughs> <coughs> that I may have eternal life and he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one and that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, <coughs> here's the key word, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? Jesus said, and he read, I think this is five through nine, is the ones he read, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not 
Honor thy father and mother. <coughs> thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Mm -hmm. What like I yet? Yeah, that's the key word, what. And then the Lord hands to him the tenth commandment, mm -hmm. which is idols. <clears throat> that's what the ten commandments. Thou shalt not. And there's a verse that says, I would not have, unless I coveted, I would not have known. I, I should have looked up. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And when the young man heard that saying, the key word is, he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. Now here's the application of the lesson in this. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter in to the kingdom of heaven. And you know, you think about that rich man and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, he had great possessions and fared sumptuously on what he thought <clears throat> was riches but they weren't riches <clears throat> Lazarus, Lazarus there and like I don't know how many times I've heard John and Dad say Lazarus had a name for the Lord knows his sheep by yeah. name mm -hmm. <clears throat> Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that camel through the eye of a needle, apparently that was a saying that was common at that time. Because you would have to unload the camel <clears throat> to go through the eye of the needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and that was their possessions that they had. <clears throat> That's the application of the lesson. Mm -hmm. And then the disciples asked the question that <clears throat> that we would all ask. Mm -hmm. Heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? <clears throat> Now look at the answer, and this is the answer of that song and what John was talking about beforehand. <clears throat> but when Jesus beheld them and said unto him, With men this is impossible. 99.9% <clears throat> of your meetings today are going by that right there, and those ca and those camels are loaded up. Amen. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. Amen. <clears throat> That's the lesson that comes from that. You can go to. <clears throat> I should just focus on that. <clears throat> um. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. But how? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have the lesson, you have the application, and then the Lord says, God, <clears throat> with God all things is possible. <clears throat> now you go back here to the Beatitudes in <clears throat> Matthew 5 and I know we all have read these and <clears throat> I want to read down through them and seeing the multitudes he went up into a mountain and when he was set, <clears throat> his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth 
and taught them. And you know, I think about what the brother from Virginia said, if the preacher shows up. And you think about that. Here's our Lord and Savior. He goes up. This time was set before the foundation of the world. Our Lord and Savior, who laid the stars out as if they were nothing in all their perfection, and he has these disciples here. <clears throat> and he sat down. He beheld them. He sat down. And he was going to teach them. And he taught them. It didn't say he was going to try to teach them. It says he taught them. <clears throat> and it's that spirit that moves within these, these, little, these little times that we are gathered and when you're home and you're reading through the scripture, it's the exact same whether you're reading through the scripture or not. I remember that. I remember a story Dad told. And I've read it. I forget where it is. <clears throat> Over, I don't know where it was in this. They were building canoes or kayaks or something and the same men were building these canoes or kayaks with all the experience, the same ones, but every one of them was different. And this one Inuit or, in, or, or whatever, he noticed that, that all these kayaks were different. But yet he'd look at like the seagulls or whatever, and they all looked exactly the same. <coughs> The Lord and that and and in that little instance or that little example, <clears throat> it he it moved him within him somehow that there must be a higher presence because mm -hmm. the works of man <clears throat> is not perfect. But the works of God is perfect every single time. So it it comes. That's why it's that John three it says that spirit it moves and lists wherever it wants and when it wants, and no man can control that in no way. Amen. So he says he opened his mouth and taught them. It says blessed. Now, many say this blessed is happy. I read one author that who was, I, I know nothing about the Greek, just what I read, but he said this could actually be translated as happy, whether it's blessed or whether it's happy. <coughs> blessed are the poor in spirit, and it starts off, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, but what are they hunger and thirsting after? Is righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they, shall, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And I think of Paul, and he said that exact same thing. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The first, now some of these are, <coughs> are characteristics of, and some <coughs> are evidences that come from those characteristics. <coughs> those who are made alive from the dead, and you go to I go to John three and the Lord the Lord was giving that to Nicodemus and 
Nicodemus, and we've said this before, the Lord didn't tell Nicodemus how. He just said you must. <clears throat> but then you go to Romans 7, and those first six verses are so critical. <clears throat> to be brought forth from the dead <clears throat> in Christ. That right there is so critical, and he uses marriage, <clears throat> a husband and a wife, as an analogy to point to that. Because <clears throat> they see and feel their justly condemned condition. <clears throat> that thief on the cross. They were both casting it into Christ, into Jesus. Save yourself and save us. But then something happened. And that thief said, we are getting our just rewards. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was shown that. And that right there, when a little child of God is shown that right there, the total depravity, mm -hmm. the total inability, that 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 John that that that's what John was sitting on in in Romans three, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And we are shown that in that poor in spirit. We are shown that, <clears throat> and that is a blessing. And the Lord is putting that characteristic. Forward. He was teaching them. He sat down, he opened his mouth, and he taught. <clears throat> we learn by repeated efforts, we discover that inability to recover <clears throat> from that depravity. No matter. That's why I went over to the 19th chapter. And, and, and that rich young ruler said, I have kept all of these. <clears throat> but the Lord said, and he, and he brought him the 10th commandment. <clears throat> and then he ended up, it's God. With God, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. <clears throat> Nothing we have to pay for this. And if you go back to Isaiah 55. Mm -hmm. O oh, everyone that thirsteth, come, come ye to the waters, and he, and he that hath no money. We absolutely have nothing within ourselves to bring. <laughs> and this one here is looking at that one, that that that, that blessing of thirst and hunger. It is a blessing when you are shown. But you thirst and you hunger after what you don't have. You, you, you we, 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 uh, we uh, steal that is put within us. And we see that we can bring no righteousness in and of ourselves through, 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 through the works of uh, of ourselves, for we are totally de 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 depraved. That poor, that that poor in spirit. We 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 are shown that, and then from that being shown of uh, that poor in spirit, <coughs> we 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 mourn. But when you mourn, you are mourning over the fact. That by the amazing grace of an almighty God, He has blessed us. That's the exact opposite of what most think. They think that they mourn 
They were mourning for the blessings. Yes, we mourn for them. But, 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 but through that being shown, that poor spirit, you mourn in the fact that you are shown how depraved you are. And you are shown the total inability of this natural carnal mind. We can do nothing. And we have no money to bring. And the Lord, and this, and this is those things that work together for good to them. <clears throat> you thirst after the imputed righteousness of Christ. That's the only righteousness that there is. But you must be made alive to be poor in spirit, to be meek, to be to hunger after that righteousness that only comes when it is imputed, that righteousness of Christ. <clears throat> But you mourn over the fact because you are shown how depraved. You are shown the blackness as the tents of, of uh, Kedar. You are shown what John was what John was talking about. <clears throat> All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no righteousness in us. What? So ever all, uh, all of our works are as of filthy rags. That, and that filthy rags is pointing to the rags that, that the lepers would, 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 would wrap their skin in. And leprosy points to sin. There was one king, Uzziah, I believe. <clears throat> he was a king. But then he was going to go over and offer at the altar... And the second that he did that, the, he, the leprosy was brought down upon him. There's only been one who can, who can hold the office of king and of priest. And that is our Lord and our Savior. He is the only one. So when that poor spirit and then that mourning is brought to you, like I said, you're not, you are mourning, for you have been shown how black you are, and you think, how, how could you bless something like, like this? That's where the true mourning, but in that you are shown that amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, and from those two attributes, or those two characteristics, meekness will, will, will be there. And like I said last week, you will very seldom, if ever, come across, come across a little child of God, a little sheep that will have a high estimation of themselves, because they have these, these, these characteristics. And there's a hungering and a, and a thirsting for that, like John said, that little bit of manna that may drop down from the table of our Lord. And that is what a little sheep feeds upon. That's that hungering and that's that thirsting. Lord, Lord said, He is that water. He is that life from that rock. <clears throat> John sent that out this morning. 62. <clears throat> Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From Him cometh my salvation. Amen. He only is my rock and my salvation. Like it said in Isaiah 55. We have nothing that we can bring. Simply to thy cross we cling, and he must give us the strength to clean. He is our rock. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And you go to and you go to Romans Romans 8 and it says nothing 
Nothing can separate you. Although there's times when you're in the bottom of that valley and you feel like that you have been separated, but you absolutely have not. And that's part of them things. That's part of them things. And that's part of these uh, 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 these beatitudes. It said, blessed are those that are persecuted. Absolutely. <laughs> Isaiah 28. <clears throat> These are very well known verses. <clears throat> oh, I went back over there. 28 and verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God Behold, I lay in Zion. And there, there's no help needed in that whatsoever. Amen. How can I, I, when that spirit moves within you, and you're shown that rock that was over in Psalms 62, and then you go over to Matthew 16, 17, and 18, and he said, "Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, the son of the, the son of John, the son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven." That's how it comes. That's how you are shown that this, this Isaiah right here. Therefore saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion. And it's a foundation. And that foundation will not be moved. For like John said, My kingdom is not of this world, lest my servants would fight. It is not of this world. It is a spiritual kingdom. <clears throat> Romans. <coughs> I know I'm bouncing, but that's okay. <coughs> Oh. Therefore, we conclude that a man is, is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. <clears throat> is he the God of Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, go to Romans 2. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Amen. And he's speaking of that circumcision of the heart. Yes. <coughs> he takes that stony heart away. <coughs> David, David, it says, create in me a clean heart, a new heart. <coughs> there are two there are two births. John 3, two births. Not two natures, two births. And there will be a conflict. That's part of that Beatitudes. There will be a conflict that goes on. But he says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And you go back to that Matthew 19 and the, and the application that the Lord put that no works of man will go through that needle. And, the, and all the apostles said, well, who then can be saved? And he said with men, oh, this is impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. <clears throat> Not of men, but of God. <clears throat> they know now <clears throat> that they we cannot supply that longing by our works. Then the Lord is pleased by His amazing grace 
to open up to our view the imputed righteousness of Christ. And this awakens that mercifulness, that mercy that you feel. <clears throat> we go to another assembly and you talk to them people and you feel that, that kindred spirit and you see those attributes that only come from the Spirit of an Almighty God. That's what you feel. That's, that's it right there. But go over to Matthew 23. <clears throat> There were, there's eight of these Beatitudes. <clears throat> and then over here, in Matthew 23, the Lord does something, and it's only by the perfection of the Spirit. There are eight woes that are put and they are then the exact opposite of, uh, of the Beatitudes. But notice the difference in the tone. Back here he says, He opened his mouth and taught them. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Amen. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, <coughs> observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. <coughs> for they bind heavy burdens, and what was it talking about that camel going through the eye? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on me on men's shoulders. And it's talking about that talking about that yoke of bondage. That's what it's talking about. Lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do. Now he tells you exactly why they do it. For to be seen of men. And that is the exact opposite. If you go back and you look at those uh, 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 the Beatitudes, that is a work that is within. He will call them Whited, sep whited sepulchers. And like John said, that's a tomb. Oh, from, and from the outside, it looks fine and perfect, but the inside is dead. But they do things to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Now listen to the description of them. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. Yep. And greetings in the markets and to be called of men. Rabbi, Rabbi, Master, Master. That's what they're doing. That's what they love. And be not called you, Rabbi. For one is your Master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. Mm -hmm. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. <laughs> this is the first woe. <coughs> I'll read it. <clears throat> for woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, now the first beatitude is what? Theirs is the kingdom. And look and look what it is. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, 
neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. The exact opposite of what that beatitude, that circumcision of the heart, not made with hands. That's where that's where the Pharisees and that's where the scribes and that's where and, and, and that's where the hypocrites and they're doing the exact same thing today. It has not changed. <coughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. And this is the morning. I can go over here. <coughs> the second one. The second beatitude is comfort for mourners. <coughs> But this one here, mourners are distressed. It says, Woe, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense to be seen, make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Uh, <coughs> the Lord... There's no pulling of punches here, is there? <coughs> the third one is meek. It's woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell yourselves. That over there, it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. The Lord said, for as much as the children were partakers of flesh and blood. He likewise took the same but sinless, the sinless flesh. But here, the <clears throat> they design systems and they put them in place. <clears throat> and the purpose of those systems are to birth children. That's what that means. They come past land and sea to make one proselyte. And they do it with these systems. They do it with zeal. But they do it with these systems that they put in place. They come past land and sea. <clears throat> but yet the beatitude is meekness. Meekness. <clears throat> the fourth one. Woe unto ye, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear, swear by the temple, it is nothing. This one is quite long. <coughs> ye fools blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth it. <coughs> that, one, that one right there is the hungering and thirsting. But a little child of God, you hunger and you thirst after righteousness, for when you are shown that there is no righteousness whatsoever in ourselves. <coughs> By the hypocrites and the Pharisees, false righteousness, and it is sought by unsound reasoning. Works of the flesh... Peter said, you are not redeemed by silver and gold, but how are, where is redemption? It is only in one place, by the precious blood of Christ. And it is nowhere else. That is the only way. <clears throat> when the Lord, when the death angel John mentioned that too. I, I was shocked at they listening to him <clears throat> because he was going over what I had been thinking about all week. When, when the death angel flew over, he didn't look at the occupants. He only looked to the blood. That's what he looked to. And the Lord here is saying, Woe unto you Pharisees! Woe unto you scribes, woe un unto you hypocrites. There are there is there is there is no system that you can devise by the hand of a man to birth anyone. 
It is a spiritual kingdom and it only comes from a birth from above and it can happen in no other way from those that were given him from before the foundation of this little piece of rock that we call earth and it can happen in no other way. Absolutely no other way. They can devise them. They can put all the money they want to in them systems. But our Lord said, Woe unto you! For you, for, for you are hypocrites. You are only doing what you are doing to be seen of men. <clears throat> then the merciful. The beatitude says you obtain mercy. That's in verse 23. But woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint, anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Those ought to you, you have done, and not leave the others undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, there is no mercy. How many times have we heard that from, 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 from right here? There is no mercy in the law. But, but the Lord, when He sat down and He taught them, He opened His mouth and He taught them. He, he, he said the merciful will, what, what, what will they obtain? Mercy. Mercy. How? When the Lord, when the Father, He looks to the blood, that's where He looks to, and that's where it is. And He and He and He brought Him forth from the grave in the power of the resurrection. <clears throat> that's where it is. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the last one, my. The persecuted. It speaks of the persecuted in the in the Beatitudes. <clears throat> but here, <clears throat> woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Now listen to what they say. <clears throat> if this is not what the hypocrite would say. If we had been in the days of our thought fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Ain't that exactly what they say? We wouldn't have done that. We would not have been partakers in that. <clears throat> but they're persecutors. <clears throat> There's a verse I can think of, but I want to shift gears just, just for a second. I've been long enough. <clears throat> you know, within each and every little child of God, <clears throat> what do you have that you weren't given? <clears throat> within every little child of God, there's two. There's a Pharisee, and then there's a little sheep. And that's the conflict. One is that carnal nature, and one is that and and one is that new man that is renewed day by day. And that's what we need. We need every one of those those beatitudes. That's the things that work together for good to them that love God. And there's times, there are times when you hunger and thirst. There's times that when you feel that you need mercy. There's times when, when, when that meekness. There's times in that persecution. And James speaks of that, that affliction. There's times, but that's why the Lord in that 19th chapter, He said with men, oh, this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. For it's God that worketh in us. 
but the will and to do of His good pleasure. Paul said in the Roman in Romans seven, he said, "I hate it. I hate what I do. I hate it. I know, but I hate it because what I what I don't want to do. That's exactly what I do, and I hate it." That's why he says, oh, wretched man, and he uses the present tense. Oh, wretched man, that I am. And it's in each and every one of us to say, I wouldn't have done that back then. I wouldn't have done it, for that's the carnal mind, which is the enemy of God. But yet, <coughs> the Lord saves us every single day. He has to, be, he has to uphold us. Every single day, every minute of every hour. <clears throat> That's that being saved every day. When He moves you from, from that legal dispensation and He circumcises that, <coughs> that fleshly heart. That's what it means. <clears throat> Those Beatitudes, they every one, they work together. And then the Lord here, He prescribes woes upon the Pharisees and the scribes and the hypocrites. <clears throat> but when you're shown that total depravity, and in that morning, I know I've said it, but I'm going to say it again. That's part of that morning. When you're shown that, when you're shown that blackness within, and you say, Lord, how could you love a one such as me? That's what Paul was saying, oh wretched man that I am. That's what he means. That's the morning. How in the world? But it's through, but then in that depth, when you're in that morning, the amazing grace of an all, almighty God is brought even more clear and more clear. <clears throat> That's part of those beatitudes. <clears throat> And each one could be gone into with so much more depth. I've merely scratched the surface. <clears throat> but you see more and more the amazing grace of an almighty God. <clears throat>